So in this question, we're given two circles, C1, C2, smaller, larger, that are just touching. And the two centers, and we're told that one of the centers, C2, is 9-11. We don't know the other center, but we do know it's equation. C1's equation. So let's have a look at part A determine the radius of C2. Let's look first at what we can deduce from knowing the equation of C1. So if you know the equation of a circle, it's fairly straightforward to find the coordinates of its center. You just check that x squared and y squared are just one of each of these, then we can do the following. We look at the x term and its coordinates and its coefficient and half it, change the sign. We look at the y term and look at its coefficient, 10, half it and change the sign. That produces the x and y coordinates of the centre of the circle. And once we have that, the radius can be calculated by squaring each of these coordinates. Negative 3 squared is positive 9. Negative 5 squared is positive 25. Add them and then subtract whatever the constant term is at the end. So take away 9. Now that gives us the square root of 25, which is 5. So the radius of the smaller circle, let's draw in this line joining the two centres. The radius of the smaller circle we now know is 5 and the centre is negative 3, negative 5. Let's call this D, let's call this point D and let's call this point F. If we know the two coordinates of the centres, then we can work out the distance between these two centres. And if we take away this radius 5, we'll be left with the radius of the larger circle. So let's work out the distance from D to F. And I'm going to use vector notation. You could also use the distance formula. Travelling from D to F, we're at an x-coordinate negative 3, we end up at an x-coordinate of 9. That's 12 units. If you like, it's 9 minus negative 3. Gives us 12. And if we're at a height of negative 5 for the y-coordinate, we've travelled up to a height of 11. That's a distance of 16. 11 minus negative 5 will give you 16. So the components travelling from D to F, we've gone 12 along, 16 up. So the distance from D to F would be the square root of 12 squared plus 16 squared. So that's 144 plus 256. Use your calculator for that. It's the square root of 400. That's 20. So the whole line from D to F is 20. This part of it is 5. So this remainder, E to F, will be 15. So we've discovered the radius of circle C2 is equal to 15 units. So that's part A. So let's now attempt part B of this question, where we have a third circle called C3 drawn such that the existing circles touch it internally and all three centres are lined up. They're on the same line. Here's what the situation looks like. There's the new circle C3 with the circles C1 and C2 touching internally. 
and all three centres are lined up. Centre of the large blue circle will be around here somewhere. So you can see we have a diameter, this blue line, which passes through the previous points. Remember we said this was D centre of C1 and the two circles touched at E and then the centre of C2 was F. So we've got this large diameter of C3 passing through the centres D and F. G and H will be the end points of that diameter. Now to determine the equation of a circle, we need to know the centre, we need to know the radius. And remember the radius would be half the diameter. Well, we have this diameter GH of the large circle. And I think we can work out its length by using the information we had previously. We knew that the radius of the small circle was 5, circle C1. The radius of circle C2 was 15. Well, there's another radius, F to G, of C2. And there's another radius of circle C1. So the diameter of C3 will have length 15 plus 15 plus 5 plus 5. Well, that's 40. So the radius of C3 will be 20. Now to find the centre of C3, since we have a diameter sitting here, GH is a diameter, it must be the midpoint of that diameter. You'll find the centre halfway along a diameter. So somewhere in there is the centre of the large circle C3. So to find the midpoint, it'd be nice to know what the coordinates of the end points of this diameter are. So we're going to have a look at some of the journeys that we looked at before. And remember to get from D to F, this was a journey 12 along and 16 up. And you'll notice that the line joining the two centres here is split in the ratio one part to three parts. In other words, DE is a quarter of DF. And if we travel 12 along and 16 up, one quarter of that will be three along, four up. In other words, to travel from D to E, we've gone three along, four up. To travel further along from E to F, we'll have done three times that journey, three, four. We'll have done a journey, nine, twelve. So three, four plus the nine, twelve will give us the twelve, sixteen. So we're just doing a couple of journeys from D to E, three along, four up. Journey from E to F, 9 along, 12 up. But there are other journeys here. F to H will be the same as the 9, 12 journey. And G to D will be the same as that 3, 4 journey. So if we know these points, D and F, we can certainly work out what H and G are by looking at the journeys that we need to travel. First from D to down to G, and then from F up to H. So let's now look at the coordinates of the centres. Remember F had uh, centre, or sorry, C2 had centre 9-11, and C1, that's point D, that centre was negative 3, negative 5. We found that out in the first part of the question. So 
The opposite of a journey three along, four up, is three to the left, four down. And if we're at negative three, three along to the left will get us to negative six. And if we're at a height of ne negative five, four down will get us to negative nine. So g is the point negative six, negative nine. And let's look at the journey from f up to h. We have to go nine along, twelve up. And we're at x-coordinate 9, and we go 9 to the right, we'll be at an x-coordinate of 18. And if we're at a height of 11, and we go up another 12, we'll be at a height of 23. So now that we know the coordinates of g and h, we can find the centre point of the diameter gh. So the centre of C3, x coordinates negative 6 and 18 added and divide by 2, that's the mean, midpoint theorem, negative 9 plus 23 is the sum of the two y coordinates, halved, that's the mean of these two. So 6 away from 18 is 12, divided by 2 gets 6. 9 away from 23 is 14, divided by 2 we get 7. So the centre of the big blue circle, C3, is 6, 7. So they finally the equation of C3 is x minus the x-coordinate of the centre plus y minus the y-coordinate of the centre equals the radius squared. So 20 squared, that's 400. So that's the equation of C3.